chapter two uh, is cultural differences and geographies of cultural difference. And we're going to be looking at uh, two major uh, divisions of culture, folk culture versus popular culture. We're going to be using some of the terminology uh, diffusion and um, cultural landscapes that we talked about or that you learned about in uh, chapter one in the first week. So we're looking at differences and commonalities between and within cultures and sometimes we can do that by just thinking of um, a small group of people within a culture as a subculture. So they may uh, have the, the majority of language, the majority of behaviors uh, that the dominant culture has, but there, but there are some things that, that they adhere to that are a little different. And one of the things we might think about a subculture in Eugene, Oregon is the young adults who um, kind of tend to hang out or, or uh, be around the bus station downtown. Um, they have a different work ethic, they have a different, um, sometimes different technologies, different communications, and so they would be a subculture. We can always also look at cultures in terms of their material and their non-material cultures. So make sure you look in the book um, and it can identify what would co contribute a, a material culture, what would uh, be involved in a non-material culture. And basically, I think of material cultures as things that, that we've created uh, or built and non-material culture more as ideas, beliefs, and values. So we'll look at this idea of popular culture versus folk culture and I have folk in quotes because it's a it's a difficult concept because it could be also considered traditional culture or it could be considered ethnic cultures and the book doesn't really go into those differences. So we can start out looking at uh, traditional or folk cultures using this idea of folk regions and these are formal folk regions so again they have a core and a periphery so when you're in the core so let's just uh, look at this um, brown area um, in Eugene or in Oregon Nevada California so that is called the Plains Ranch folk culture and if I were in the center of this area I I would see the majority of people living in that folk culture way and as I move away from this I would see fewer and fewer people um, let's see if that's a link there's also uh, this purple dot shows the location of a, a folk culture in Oregon called the Old Believers and, and that's a folk culture in Woodburn, Oregon. But you can see that there are these some large, some small folk culture regions within the United States. And we can compare that to popular culture based on the types of cultural traits that we're exploring. So we could look at it in terms of technology, we could look at it in terms of uh, diffusion. So when you're comparing folk and pop culture, think about how do folk cultures make a living? What are their family systems like? How is work divided? Uh, who makes and enforces the rules? And so um, in folk cultures, people tend to make a living in a traditional way. Uh, family systems tend to be very strongly uh, controlled often uh, by religious institutions. So the rules and the enforcement of rules are done within a family as opposed to pop culture where uh, many of our societal rules are enforced by some kind of government agency. Um, when we think about uh, popular culture, we think about rapid diffusion, um, almost contagious diffusion sometimes, especially with technology today. Uh, popular or folk culture tends to resist or create um, a barrier to diffusion. So when we look at uh, these ideas of diffusion in popular cultures, I mean here's a McDonald in the Ukraine, uh, Visa, uh, Visa cards are everywhere, that's definitely a technology uh, diffusion. Interesting, uh, reverse hierarchy diffusion is uh, can be seen in the movement of Walmarts. So where we talked about a hierarchical diffusion moving from a large city to the next large city and then trickling down, uh, Walmart did it in the reverse. It moved from small town to small town and then uh, into the big towns. But that definitely is a popular culture 
uh, diffusion. So here's a comparison of agriculture, uh, folk diffusion or folk agriculture in a very traditional way, popular agriculture, um, completely uh, mechanized um, uh, small farms versus large commercial farms. One of the things the book talks about is that uh, popular culture has kind of created this idea of placelessness, um, the idea that you could go to the Taj Mahal and really feel like it's completely different than uh, a strip mall somewhere else is becoming less and less uh, common. When I was in Turkey a couple years ago and then in uh, Crete last year, there were Starbucks, uh, Burger Kings, you know, you could you could get traditional American uh, culture anywhere. Um, folk culture seems to be considered uh, much richer because it's unique, um, and uh, they think about this idea of uh, placeless has this connection to place becomes weak, and you really don't feel like you're in a different place. Uh, another example of placelessness is this idea of the, the strip mall and you really could move from one city to another in the United States and, and really not know where you are based on the look of, of, uh, of, of a mall or shopping areas. Um, cultural regions, we look at, uh, the book talks about vernacular regions and um, the idea that people have their, their perceptions. Um, so you could think about a subculture being in the state of Jefferson or um, the the South and the West of having these uh, almost folk cultural ideas. Um, and the book also goes into this idea of indigenous regions. So these would be um, not completely folk cultures, but uh, very traditional um, uh, uh, kind of uh, original people. Uh, from well that's what indigenous means so kind of be able to to differentiate between those um, book has this idea of this convergence uh, hypothesis by Wilbur Zelensky and the idea that there is really less and less um, regional variation and especially I love this in the naming of of our children and the idea that um, there are I think two of the most common uh, baby names in the last year have been Isabella and Jacob and yep that's from the Twilight series so you know we uh, we tend to pick up even how we name our children in pop culture based on the diffusion and the rapid diffusion of information um, another thing about uh, folk culture that's or popular culture that's much different from folk culture is that we have uh, in popular culture these landscapes of uh, consumption and these landscapes of leisure. Uh, we have um, uh, places that are just intended for vacating and for play. Uh, that's not a, a part of a folk culture. The idea also is that um, these things in globalization and folk culture have increased our mobility but also weakened our attachment to family uh, connections and so that our uh, family structures are as a whole not as strong. One of the things that's interesting about uh, popular culture is that our, um, our dependence and our uh, value of pets has changed um, from from the idea of a family pet with a name like Spot, uh, Fido, to a family member where um, animals are, are being given human names, uh, Molly, Sue, Billy. That's been a major change in, uh, in popular culture over the last several years. I have that in there twice. Um, there are places where people are uh, trying to fight this globalization idea and um, make sure you read through this idea of consumer nationalism um, and the loss of some of these indigenous uh, technical knowledge uh, you know where are we losing that why why would it be important to hang on to some of those those concepts and again this idea of popular culture can be defined as kind of the hallmark of change. We, we love change. Our, our economy is based on um, planned obsolescence, you know. And so here, here is this 
uh, culture of, of entertainment, culture of leisure. Um, you would not see that in uh, traditional uh, countries that have a traditional cultural background or an indigenous cultural background. And just this great image of, and I don't know if this is real or if this is doctored, but um, most definitely I borrowed it for the for the PowerPoint. But we do have a landscape of consumption. Uh, what to do with our trash um, is a huge issue in popular cultures, and we are often uh, developed countries are uh, shipping uh, a lot of our toxic trash and and other kinds of things to uh, developing countries for them. Uh, to deal with um, landscapes in uh, uh, f looking at folk and popular culture as opposed to their built landscapes and this is just such a fascinating uh, comparison when we look at languages we'll, we'll revisit this but here are two uh, very similarly built folk houses um, from incredibly different uh, areas of the world. So there's this, this sense that there's a, a traditional connection between uh, Mongolia and uh, the, the Navajo Nation. This is an example of a shotgun house. Uh, these were very common in, uh, in the south, especially around um, uh, New Orleans. Um, and the idea was a shotgun. You could fire a shot from the living room door and it would go completely through the house but these were houses that were built as infill um, narrow little strips so that uh, you could have individual houses for people but it's really interesting that that these really indicate um, a specific landscape a cultural landscape that you find only in certain areas of the country um, definitely uh, popular culture um, and then I liked this idea a lot, this landscape of myths. So, uh, you know, here is this uh, Plantation Florida uh, shopping mall that it's not just for shopping, it's a destination. So we do our, our leisure, we do our entertainment, and we do our consumerism or our consumption in these completely uh, mythical uh, created landscapes. And uh, one of the things that people talk about in uh, popular culture is that uh, our values are often reflected in um, our buildings, uh, our largest buildings. And so then in the uh, Middle Ages, the largest buildings were the churches, which kind of reflected uh, the, the value those institutions had. And now uh, often our sports arenas in popular culture are considered um, our most important buildings. So um, a pretty simple chapter uh, and, and really focusing on this idea of traditional uh, cultures and the difference in pop cultures where uh, one tends to resist change and the other embraces change. <laughs>